An investigative report by a consortium of journalists has shown that dozens of current and past world leaders, including several in Africa and Nigeria, have allegedly been hiding suspicious investments in mansions, exclusive beachfront properties, yachts, and other assets for many years. It emerged from a leak of nearly 12 million files obtained from 14 different financial firms across the globe. Among the allegations in the Pandora Papers are details surrounding the family of Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, that secretly owned a network of offshore companies for decades. Former Anambra State Governor Peter Obi is also one of the individuals whose hidden business activities have been thrown open by the project. According to the report, in 2010, Obi set up Gabriela Investments Limited, his first discrete company in the British Virgin Island, named after his daughter. He's alleged to have deliberately refused to disclose certain offshore assets in his uh, declaration forms to Nigeria's Code of Conduct Bureau. Well, and joining us to take a critical look at the revelations in the Pandora Papers is Musi Kilu Mujid. The editor-in-chief of Premium Times, which is a newspaper that collaborated with other journalism organizations across the world to get these papers out. Glad to have you uh, join us, Musikilu. Uh, thank you so much. Good. A, a, a real Pandora's box has been ornated by this Pandora's papers. We're talking about 29,000 offshore companies from more than 200 countries, with most from Russia, UK, China. Uh, Argentina and Brazil. What's your sense of the work done by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists? Well, amazing job, I must say. And um, it's a job, it's an undertaking that we change our world for good. As you know, this started more than 10 years ago. The ICIJ has been at this for 10 years. No, 12 years now, starting with uh, what they call the offshore leaks. Then we, we went to the Swiss leaks. We went to the Panama Papers. We went to the Paradise Paper. Then we had the FinSec file. And then here we have the Pandora Papers. In between, there were others that did Lux leaks. There were Mauritius leaks and all of that. And the whole idea is to establish some kind of transparency around how people conduct their affair. Illicit financial flow is one of the biggest problems that the world has to, to tackle. In Nigeria, for instance, we talk about the, the, the Naira losing value every day, largely due to a lot of illicit financial flow. A lot of Nigerians, wealthy and powerful, do not have their wealth here in this country. Their wealth has stashed abroad. So the Nigerian, so how do you, how does your currency gain power? When all that happens, people convert their naira to dollars and ship abroad. And that's what happens everywhere. So it's a big issue that the African Union has attempted to tackle. The United Nations talk about it every time. The ECOWAS is troubled by it, by the lack of transparency around financial dealings. So, and everyone seems to do it now. Both the big business people, those in politics, and we hope that endeavors like this will help our world, will make us much more transparent. And that's the point. When you hear Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta, the president of Kenya, who is named in this list of Panama um, Pandora's his relatives, Pandora uh, papers. basically. He has said that these revelations will bring about transparency in public office. Yeah. It, it almost seems like hypocrisy. Let's talk about the fact that these revelations actually expose the underbelly of the level of corruption, not just among politically exposed, but business uh, persons. And you have you know, just named a long list of these revelations over the years, 12 years. Has it really made an impact? How much difference will this Pandora Papers make well, in, in you know, governance across the Well, world? revelations have advantages of their own. But you know changes can be slow. Oh. 
changes can be slow, but we just must be at it. If we are not at it, then not, nothing venture, nothing wins. That's what they say. Mm. So um, it has a lot of changes have come. Remember that after the Panama Papers and the Paradox, uh, the, the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers, mm. lots of billions, millions of dollars were recovered by countries around the world. Lots of people willingly give up, you know, pay tax that they didn't pay. But let me also tell you that even in Nigeria, remember that um, when this government came, they said voluntary asset declaration. declaration. They put up a voluntary. A lot of people, by virtue of the 2016 revelation of the Panama Papers, woke up to government and confessed, I had this. And they paid taxes okay. on it. So those kind of changes we come. It may be slow, mm, but I'm steady. telling you that we di this is the biggest leak. This one is bigger than all the leaks that you have come before. You think in the before. case of Nigeria it will it's make really, a lot of difference? It's, it's, well, really, it's really big. I act actually want to bring in Nigeria. Nigeria mm. is not left out. Peter will be the former governor of Anambra State, has a company called the PMM. -M P stands for Peter, M for Margaret's wife, uh, G for Gabriela, Gabriela, the daughter, and then of course yeah. G, uh, and then the Geoffrey. next G for Gregory, mm. is his it, son. Is it Geoffrey or Gregory? Gregory, Gregory. his oh, okay. son. Uh, so uh, comprising that name. But my, my question really is, can all these people, uh, Musikili, be prosecuted? Well, that's the big question, my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, look, they are pending issues. Um, during the Panama Papers, so many people, cases like this came to the fore. People who never declared their asset, people who took money and kept abroad. Uh, look, David Mark was mentioned at the time. Mm -hmm. Saraki was mentioned. The current governor of Niger State was mentioned. So Bello. many people. Bello was mentioned. And that one seems like a family tradition because as you will see, like father, like son, you understand? So as you will see as the reporting continues. So, but we hope that this government that says it's fighting corruption, we find it worthy of taking action. Does based, yes, ba based only on this uh, Pandora of papers? Of course. But when you hear that uh, CJN, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, I mean, a, a judge at any level should be like, you know, above board, like Caesar's wife, governors, present governors, former governors, pastors named in this. But so let me, let and me. And even uh, lawmakers. But let me make the point clearly. Yes, please. That it is not criminal to whom offshore assets. No, because I was going to That's, get to that. Yeah. The Canadian yeah. yeah. monarch is talking yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah. no. It's, let me make it very clear that uh -huh. it's not really criminal. What is it's the criminal that. aspect of the it? The criminal aspect of it, you know, what's curious is that, let me tell you, like in the case of the, the that case, that which has not been properly reported, which you are trying to draw me out, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. because I'm not, uh, I'm not going to speak about that in detail at this point, but the okay. cases, whoever holds assets with um, a share company, companies. share company, must mm -hmm. have something to hide. Mm. Why it is not criminal, but there are moral issues around it. That if you want to buy a property in Abuja, why must you incorporate a company, let's say, in Mauritius or in the British Virgin Islands to come buy a property in Abuja? If you have made legitimate money, can't you pay for your assets? In the and case of Peter Obi, for example, yeah. he's saying that a company that is co-owned by others, that he's not under any compulsion but you to, know, you but know, to give out but you know that, But my sister, you know that is laughable. It's bad that that. You know that. I'm sorry to use that word. But you know that the, the, the law is very clear. The code of conduct is a constitutional matter. Yeah, it is. And it is very clear about what you have to declare. Every mm. asset that you hold must be declared. Yeah. And including not just your assets, the asset of your family members, including your kids who are not yet 18. Musikili, before we let you go, mm. 30 seconds. Uh, how are the governments of these various nations supposed to respond to this information? Because there has been the huge loss of funds because of dodging tax. 
They will re respond in various ways. Some will respond very fast. They will take action. Arrests will be made. Laws will be made. They will strengthen their laws on beneficial ownership. We hope, which is where Nigeria should be, strengthen its laws so that whoever owns anything, it is easy to know the owner. In Abuja, let us know who owns all the buildings in Abuja. Let us know who owns all the oil firms, all the businesses. Mm. So if you impose transparency on your dealings, every aspect of your dealings, of course, we must have arrived there. But I don't know how Nigeria is going to respond. Nigeria well, does not have a history of responding appropriately uh -huh. to things like that. That's the question we tried okay, we'll to ask earlier. We'll, uh, we'll thank you so there. much, uh, Moskilu Mojid, uh, investigative journalist, premium times and editorial. Editor-in-chief. Editor-in-chief. Thank, editor thank you so time. much for joining us on yeah. this night tonight.